guest tonight is a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist who writes for The New Yorker and is the author of the new book, War on Peace, The End of Diplomacy and the Decline of American Influence. Please welcome Ronan Farrow. <laughs> Welcome to the show. A pleasure to be here. You are an overachiever in the journalistic world. So many people talk about all the stories that you're breaking. I mean, the Me Too movement uh, was broken by your story. Like, I mean, it, it, it's what sparked a movement. Well, there were very brave women who were sources. There were right. great activists who preceded that. But I'm honored to have been a conduit for some of those stories. They, right. they were and tough to tell. They were tough to tell for the women involved. They were also tough for you to tell as a journalist. Like, we read all these stories about Harvey Weinstein and these people that he was hiring. And were you, were you ever afraid? Is that a point where you go, like, maybe I shouldn't break stories. I'm just going to tweet 10 most <laughs> likely things that people want to click on. I mean, I'll do that, too. Cat listicles are the future, guys. Right. <laughs> but uh, but it, is, it is true. You know, look, there was uh, intimidation. There was a system designed to shut down these stories. And that right. affected not just me, but a whole range of brave journalists going up against this thing. And uh, sure, like, the moment when you find yourself sort of deciding, do I go home tonight because I'm getting staked out, and, like, if I do go home, I go in with my keys, and I'm, like, looking under the bed and pulling right. back the shower curtain. It's like, okay, either I'm crazy or actually the story is stranger than fiction. And as it turns out, what we were able to break is he was hiring, you know, former Mossad agents, right. combat-ready operatives that were, in fact, following people around using false identities. The news that you just broke today, for instance, or that just broke today, is a story of how the Trump administration was secretly hiring an Israeli team of spies to dig up dirt on people who worked on the Iran deal. Is that correct? In fact, the same Israeli spies uh, from a firm called Black Cube. The same as the that, Harvey Weinstein? That Harvey Weinstein hired. Uh, and in some cases, using the same false identities and front companies that I heard from when I was getting stalked by, by these guys. Wait, so, so, so explain to me just a little bit of the details. So they were hiring these people not to, not to undermine the deal itself, but to undermine the people who put the deal together. Why? So that's the surprising part of this. These are policy wonks, you know? These are Obama advisors. And, you know, we don't have all the answers yet, but... Sources close to this and documents that we obtained at The New Yorker show very clearly there was a seemingly political in focus uh, operation designed to smear them, seemingly all connected to their work on the 2015 Iran deal. Which, it's interesting because this sounds less like a story you would hear in a first world country or a country that claims to be pro-democracy than you would in a country that's totalitarian. Uh, you talk about this in the book, War and Peace, the end of diplomacy and the decline of American influence. It really speaks to, uh, in a way, what's happening with the Iran deal. It seems like Trump and his people do not care about the diplomacy that America conducts in the world. It's now just become war or no war, talking or no talking. Why do you think that's happened? Yeah, these stories all connect. Look, these are individuals fighting desperately to save a deal because they believe if we unilaterally as a nation back out of the Iran deal, for all its imperfections, it's worked in its narrow goal of containing them for a right. time. And if we back out, their fear is it drives a wedge between us and our allies, and it potentially sends a message to North Korea and other rogue states that we don't want to be sending, that they shouldn't come to the table. And as you suggest, this is all connected. They are getting smeared and intimidated. Right. It's in a context, as I outline in War on Peace, where their profession is endangered, where people who make our deals and negotiate and hopefully secure uh, options for addressing conflicts around the world that don't involve going in guns blazing, uh, they are under attack. They are getting fired en masse. People don't understand what they do anymore. And right. more and more, that work is being outsourced to the military, to our spies, to the intelligence community. That's interesting, because you, you spoke to every living secretary of state. And you spoke about how America's diplomacy has been on the decline. This isn't something that started with Trump, but it may be accelerating now. Is this a sustainable way to conduct oneself in, in the world uh, where it is military first, diplomacy second? Well, what I chronicle in War on Peace is in place after place, when we sabotage opportunities for political settlements and peaceful ways out, and we go in shooting first, it, it really comes back to haunt us, Trevor. Uh, again and again, we see situations where we end up lying down with warlords and strongmen and right. unsavory characters, and then we have no leverage over them because we have fired all of the diplomats who could negotiate and play hardball in that way. Right. 
And if you, if you look at the current situation, there are countries where America doesn't have a diplomat right now. There are countries where there is no one handling that high-level negotiation. What happens in that, in that case? Yeah, so you're exactly right. This is happening to a new extreme right now. Uh, Donald Trump has unceremoniously fired, basically, you know, ambassadors across the world, uh, assistant secretaries that run some of the most sensitive regions in the world. Right. So we have an, an understaffed, unmanned diplomatic operation. There is precedent for this before. We've seen other administrations, Democratic and Republican, sort of sideline diplomats and right. see how disaster it is, disastrous it is. But this is new in terms of what an extreme it is. And when you look at the consequences, we see uh, situations where there are active opportunities to make peace and we just give them up. We see situations where you could bring people to the table potentially and spare right. brave servicemen and women going into the line of fire and we give those up. It's a real problem. And, and I'd also point out for people who kind of don't want to think about those high level talks, these are also the people that screen dangerous interlopers from coming into the United States. Right, right, that right. That stamp your passports, that uh, save you if you're kidnapped abroad. You know, th this is unglamorous work, but it's life-saving. It's life-saving, it's integral, and it's currently crumbling. It's a fascinating book. You're a fascinating man. Thank you so hey, much for being you, on the Trevor. show. Pleasure I really to be here. appreciate it. War on Peace is available now. Ronan Farron, everybody.